Hi everyone, T. Morris here. If you're curious on the status of part two of our visit to the Jenny Wade house with Steve Saylor, I'm still working on it. Between TwitchCon and my haunted Tiki birthday party held at Linville Manor, yes, you heard that right, we went a week without posting, and part two is still in production. Watch for a premiere next week. But in the meantime, how about we take a look at a brand new documentary on the paranormal? Apple Plus released a heck of a present on my birthday weekend. This is The Enfield Poltergeist, a four-part docuseries that looks at the haunting that inspired The Conjuring 2. Unlike what the WCU depicts, The Enfield Poltergeist goes into what really happened at 284 Green Street, Enfield, near London. And this four-part docuseries takes you on a ride. The Enfield Poltergeist was an infamous 1977 case in which single mom Peggy Hodgson and her three children reported disturbances at their house, many of them centering around the middle daughter, Janet. Strange knockings within the walls and floors, furniture moving on their own accord, and even disembodied voices. Morris Gross and Guy Playfair of the Society for Psychical Research undertook the case, resulting in over 200 hours of audio and a collection of accounts spanning nearly two years. Now, this is paranormal investigation in 1977. The audio is reel to reel. The cameras are 35 millimeter still shots with timers. Considering the technology of the day, the data captured is pretty compelling. But what exactly was captured and what is fact versus fabrication? We'd love to hear your thoughts on this case, so by all means, drop us a comment on the episode. And while you're there, like and subscribe to the channel and enable notifications for whenever we put up new content. All these interactions really help us out at Old Spirits. One thing that makes this docuseries particularly watchworthy is its style. Actors are cast as those at the heart of the Enfield case, but instead of reenactments, the actors lip sync to the recorded interviews and investigation footage. And since there's 200 hours of audio captured, this makes for really creative storytelling. Uh, where's, where's Billy sleeping? Um, See, you want to go with Margaret? Let him go over the first side. The only thing is, if she sells any activity. That's what I'm saying, like, right? you guys. The Enfield Poltergeist is a powerful deep dive into this case. At the core of the series, the data collected from SPR's Morris Gross and Guy Playfair. And here's another standout in this documentary. The filmmakers are not necessarily saying something did or didn't happen but they are asking the harder question about this investigation. Why did this particular case play out the way it did? Major kudos, by the way, to the filmmakers for accurately depicting the Warren's actual involvement in the case. Less like The Conjuring 2, more like Wallace and Gromis' A Grand Day Out. What starts off as a fascinating case for paranormal activity and devolves into a possible hoax ends with a heartbreaking look at how wide reach trauma can have on people. The Enfield Poltergeist, provided you're stepping back to look at what the series is presenting, may offer up a new perspective on this case and on paranormal studies. As a paranormal investigator, what was my takeaway? I truly believe this field, in order to thrive and be taken seriously, needs to take a more critical look at what is happening in any location and how mental health matters both to those affected by the unexplained and by those who investigate it. Have a look at the Enfield Poltergeist and welcome its challenges. And thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this review. From all of us here at OSI, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you in the field.